Hello and welcome back to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I want to talk about the strategy behind how to manage your contacts and how that kind of plays into a bit of an email strategy as well. Uh, because one of the common problems I see with clients that I've worked with is that um, people that I talk to don't really have one centralized database for their contacts and they don't have an easy way to just simply contact their clients. So I'm talking about sort of the strategy in this video. I'm not really getting into the tactics around how you actually set this up but I just want to give you some ideas and sort of point you in the direction in terms of how to think about your contacts. Now, if you have any questions uh, about anything in this video, leave me a comment below. Uh, if you are interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one to get help with Pipedrive, there are details of how to book an introductory call with me or join my new master Pipedrive coaching and uh, coaching program and online course. So let's get into this video. So just to articulate the problem a little bit more, um, what I have pe hear from people all the time is that they have their contacts kind of spread out over multiple sources. Maybe you have some contacts uh, in different Excel spreadsheets, maybe different platforms, like you have an email provider like MailChimp, you have some people in there. Maybe you have an e-commerce system and you have some contacts or clients in there. And you've just got people spread out all over the place. Maybe you've done some events and some have some lists but you don't really have one centralized database where all your contacts and your clients, most importantly, live. And that means it's quite hard when you want to do simple things just like see a list of all your previous clients, uh, let alone clients that who have purchased specific products or services, but just a list of all your clients, that might be quite difficult to do because everyone's spread out. Or if you want to email prospects or clients and send them maybe periodic updates about your business, or maybe nurture important relationships, you know, clients and just keep them nurtured long term. Doing that can be really hard if you don't have one centralized database. In my business, my email list is essentially my biggest asset. Um, in my, the context that I have, that is the, what I consider to be my biggest asset. I think that would be true for a lot of other businesses as well. So my advice is this, when it comes to organizing your contacts, is to pick one tool or database that is going to be your point of truth. This is sort of your master list where it's the database you want to make the most accurate and the most up to date. It's the one that maybe other systems and tools will feed from as well. So for me, that's Pipedrive. I, you know, there are other tools you could use like Google or Outlook contacts. You could use an email provider like ConvertKit or MailChimp. For me, I've chosen Pipedrive because Pipedrive is where I manage all of my sales. And so all of my prospects, people that book calls with me, to learn about my consulting, they get created as contacts in Pipedrive. If they turn into clients because they've paid for my consulting, that's, that data is stored in Pipedrive. Even non-client contacts are in there. So even just important relationships, people I've collaborated with, partners, um, other referral partners, all of those contacts are in Pipedrive as well. Now I have connected other tools like Google Contacts. I actually use PySync to sync my contacts from Pipedrive to Google. And I use things like Zapier to zap contact information from Pipedrive to ConvertKit when a client pays and works with me. I wanna put them onto different lists. And it's important to note that the decision I've made is that um, I only have like one way syncs set up with my system. So generally speaking, you, there's only, uh, you can only man manually update contacts in Pipedrive. When there are two way sync options, like in Pipedrive for, for, um, for a matter of fact, you can't actually, or I've set it so that you can't update Pipedrive in an automated way. I don't want maybe to update something in Google and have that update Pipedrive. Just to maintain the quality of my system, I've decided that I only want to update things in Pipedrive and have that flow to other systems and not the other way around. Now, I've chosen to have Pipedrive as my main point, point of truth or source of truth because as well as being able to store simple uh, contact information, like we can see in here, you know, people's names, phone numbers, emails, this is a demo account, by the way, that these aren't real people. Um, but besides this basic information, there's a lot of metadata in here and sales data about the kinds of things people are purchasing from me, deals that have been completed. And so there's just a lot of data that I can tap into whenever I need to filter and segment my contacts to find specific groups of people. So for example, um, I've got a filter up here. Actually, let's go to, yeah, we're on people. I've got a filter for what I call high value clients. And if I look at the criteria, this is actually, even though we're filtering people, I'm looking for people where they have a deal value of more than $2,000, which is which has a status of one. So that metadata is just in here. As I use Pipedrive, this list will automatically update. 
So when I select that filter, high value clients, it whittles my contacts down to these 10, these top 10 clients. And then I can select these and I can even send a group email. That's one of the great features of Pipedrive is being able to bulk email those people. So that's a really simple little dimension or segment I've been able to build just using the metadata in Pipedrive about the deals that people have previously done with me. I've also taken advantage of some of the custom fields and labels. So you can see up here I've got some labels for like uh, whether they're a customer or a hot or warm lead. And you can even use a custom field with a multi-option drop-down to be able to kind of tag contacts into different groups. So you can see I've got one here for like VIP or Christmas card list or I've got one for retainer client. And so if you want to group your contacts, maybe you have a group for referral partners, maybe you have a group for um, that you met at a trade show or an expo, you can use the custom fields and this sort of tagging feature to be able to group them into different buckets when you want to email and reach out to those different types of people. As I mentioned just before, when you want to contact these related these people and to just, just maintain that relationship, maybe you want to send an update about your business or a new service or product that you offer, you can, like I said, you can just select the filter, you can send a group email. Uh, the bulk email feature here in Pipedrive lets you email up to 100 people at once. If you do want to email more than 100 people, um, like I often do, I have like a, about 800 people on my Pipedrive newsletter list now. If I want to send out an update about a new video that I've just made, that's where I would use a third-party tool like ConvertKit. Uh, you could use something like MailChimp or ActiveCampaign, or at the time of recording this in early 2020, Pipedrive actually recently acquired MailyGen, which will uh, hopefully later this year give us the option to build our own automated sequences and bulk emails as well. But right now I'm using uh, ConvertKit, and so if I switch over to my ConvertKit account, I've got a couple of tags here. You can see these ones list uh, Asana con coaching, list pipe drive coaching, these various list tags. So when you purchase a product from me, Zapier will copy that email address over to um, uh, ConvertKit and it will apply that tag so I can easily, very easily bulk email everyone that has purchased a specific product from me. I also have some automation built into here. That's one of the great things you can do with ConvertKit is you can build out automated sequences. So I've got things like purchase follow-up sequences. If you purchase specific products or services from me, you'll actually get a follow-up sequence. And I've actually created what's called a course sequence here. So in this case, if you sign up to my master Asana um, course and coaching program, you get tagged with this purchase MA tag, which triggers uh, a sequence of um, emails. So you a bunch of, I apply a bunch of other tags and do some behind the scenes stuff here. But then you get a, a course uh, module one email where it sends you, you know, welcome to the course. This is what you should do in module one. And then I can drip out the next few emails over the coming weeks. So it will send module one, it will wait for seven days, and it will then send module two. I've actually designed this in a way where you can actually fast track through the system. So if you complete the lessons in the course uh, much quicker, you get this module one completed tag, which pulls the subscriber forwards and sends the module two email straight away rather than waiting seven days. But that's the kind of logic and the kind of sequence that you can build with a tool like ConvertKit. And so what this means is that I can kind of put client success and that client nurture almost on autopilot. So you just pay, you sign up, you start going through the course and you just start getting emails from me at the appropriate time. And it means I can, again, just really build and maintain that relationship with those clients long term. So as you can see um, in Pipedrive, I've got a few different ways there that I can filter and tag people into different groups. And then I can either bulk email or I can pass them into a sequence in ConvertKit. So I have a few different ways that I can just uh, keep people up to date on uh, updates or new products, new services in my business, and just build and nurture those relationships long term. That's probably the most common thing people ask me about, in fact, is how do I just build these relationships and keep them, you know, build these uh, contacts and nurture people long term using using email as a tool. So hopefully this video has given you a bit of a an idea. Uh, hopefully I've been able to point you in the right direction in terms of how to be thinking about this. If you'd like to learn more about how to actually set up this kind of system using Zapier to link different tools together, then definitely check out my new master pipe drive training program. Program. Let me know if you have any questions about that. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.